Hey buddy, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, the king of beta testing, Rich Dambolian. Give me all your beta games. I want to test them and make sure there are no bugs before they go out. <laughs> uh, it's a service to the gaming community. <laughs> uh, Rich had some trouble connecting, and then I got the wrong number for the show episode because oh, we have boy. this whole system where everything is automated now. Everything is automated here, top to bottom. So I got to have everything set perfectly right. in order for the show to go through its automatic process of being edited all on its own. It's actually crazy right. how we set this up. So if I have one number off, it throws the whole thing off. Suncast freaks out. MG Geek's head explodes. Jonathan leaps off that ledge. And oh, that's boy. it. And we start all over. So that's how it works. Uh, you know what it is? Yeah. Mercury and retrograde. Is that what it you- is? I don't know if you buy into any of that stuff, but Mercury and retrograde, I believe, has started, which means all your doodads go crazy. Yeah, all my wife's friends are writing about that right now. All the influencers, all the all the influ- <laughs> all, all their life's problems. Let me tell you, once you hit a certain age, uh, all my wife's friends' problems all revolve <laughs> around Mercury being in retrograde. Oh, They're like, yeah. oh, got into a car accident today, and my son is failing school. Mercury's in retrograde. I'm like, no, maybe you drove really crappy, and your son sucks. Maybe hey, that. listen, don't don't fall asleep behind the wheel and get a better <laughs> yeah. education for your kid. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with Mercury being in retrograde. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it's wild. This week we had a uh, a really big week for the show. We were on F4W's uh, YouTube account streaming our Royal Rumble watch along. Over twenty one thousand people joined us. At this very moment, I mean, I think the number's going up, but 21,000 people joined us for that awesome, uh, awesome show. We had a lot of fun doing it. We're going to talk about that, obviously, yeah. at the end of the show, but we have a t- tremendous amount of news to talk about from last night. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, Rich and I were speaking about this, and we decided we should go forward with this. Um, so, last night during AEW, at the end of AEW, Kenta showed up. Uh <laughs> We're going to more details about what was going on when we do the recap, but oh Rich, did you expect that? No, not at all. I lost my shit and I yelled at the TV and my wife was quietly reading uh, in the living room and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I did not realize you were sitting right there. Um, I audibly gasped with like a holy shit. Um, didn't see it coming. Did, did you expect that at all? No, I... You know, he tweeted something like, how long does it take to get from Orlando to whatever, Jacksonville, Jacksonville. or something like that? Yeah. Um, I I know that they were working on it. And when Moxley appeared on their TV, their U.S., mm-hmm. t- I guess their U.S. show, right, that's based out in California. Yeah. Uh, when he appeared there, I I had a feeling that we're going to do something because they got to. I'll go through what the story is, but I didn't expect it to be done this way. I thought it would be more done on the New Japan side than the AEW side, but it looks like it's going to be a, a a mixed bag here. So uh, let's begin with the with the start of all this, right? Yeah. When AEW was starting out, they fully intended on working with New Japan, right? Because right, right. Kenny Omega was the big asset that they grabbed from New Japan. The Bucks, Cody, Hangman. I mean, essentially, it was a it was a mass exodus out of New Japan to head on over to AEW and start it. Right. There was a moment where they were very open to working together. The New Japan side. AEW has always been open to this. Right, right. And so I don't I don't have the exact reason for this, okay? So I'm going to say maybe it had something to do with conducting business in Japan opposed to North America. Maybe it had something to do with sour grapes that you're losing your top, top, top talent that really created this boom for you for New Japan. Right, right. But Harold Mage um, shut down the 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 discussions, and one of the reasons that we that I've heard, and I think Dave Meltzer spoke about this a couple times, is that when they were in the middle of talking about you know what they're going to do and possibly building AW and what the plan with AW is, Tony Khan never went to Japan to have a meeting. Huh. Okay. He sent the Bucks, and I think he sp- sent Chris Harrington. Okay, I think I, I could be I could be wrong on that, but I- I'm gonna let's go forward with that. I once that happened, I I think they they for whatever reason in in New Japan they they stopped taking them seriously. Maybe they were a little insulted that you know mm-hmm. the reps that were sent were talent, even though they're 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 behind the scenes, right? 
They're they're executive right. vice presidents of the company. But there was a there was an issue here. Also, sour grapes, right? You just stole all my talent. Mm -hmm. We were playing a North American expansion with these dudes, including Jericho, right. by the way. They took Jericho. So AEW never said, like, well, we're shutting the door. They were pissed. The guys were pissed. But I think the, the, the concept was, listen, we want to work with everybody, and we will benefit from this. Everybody will benefit. Wrestling be will benefit. If we all work together, yeah. we have the top talent here. When Moxley got the championship... It was never intended to hold, he was never intended to hold it this long. It was actually there to legitimize the U.S. championship and to kind of right. build the U.S. Br brand for New Japan. Here's where everything goes bad. Pandemic hits. They can't take the title off of him. They refuse right. to strip him because they, they're smart enough to know he's an asset for them. To Hot have, commodity. Yeah, of course. He's the, he's, listen, top guy in AEW, top guy in WWE. Do you want to strip this guy and possibly sever that relationship or exactly. have him hold a title and owe you this? Right, right, right. So they made the right call here. Um, Kenta has been teasing this for, for months now. Uh, they finally agreed that they were going to do something in California during those shows. And out of nowhere, we got... Kenta at the end of AEW attacking John Moxley with Kenny Omega sitting on the floor and just laughing. Uh, such a good moment. I that was definitely for the diehards, right? Oh yeah. Like oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. And and it, that was such a cool moment too. I think AEW does very well in delivering those cool like quote unquote wrestling moments. Um did you watch the exclusive stuff backstage with kenny and kenta no i didn't see it what happened so he goes oh i didn't know brother switchblade was gonna send somebody over and he goes to give um kenta the two sweet and he kenta turns around and tells him to go f himself they bleep it out wow he's like go f yourself i'm not here for you i'm here for moxley and then he walks away so that's kind of neat how you get that little extra tease of what if we're going to see these dudes who are part of New Japan that live in Florida, Jay yeah. White, Tamatanga, Kenta, do some kind of Bullet Club invasion thing with the AEW guys and then the Impact guys? So it, 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 it opens the door, the forbidden door, right? To a lot the of forbidden cool stuff. Door. I like that. Yeah. No, I, listen, dude, it, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. So the big question has been, like, when does Okada come over? When does Tanahashi come? When does... <laughs> <laughs> uh, when does I uh, Ibushi come? Right, right. Don't expect those guys here immediately. Expect, like Rich mm -hmm. said, the Florida guys, right? Jay White, yeah. very interesting. Switchblade is very interesting. We've already heard the mm -hmm. rumors that he's talking to other people. Listen, he's staying in New Japan. That he's not going, but now this door mm -hmm. is open. Um, th this alliance between Impact. Uh, and New Japan really started with Don Callis. Mm -hmm. New Japan really likes him. Uh, and uh, from everything that I, that's been told to me, this has been a tremendous hurdle for Impact to kind of break this this wall that was put up between Impact and and New Japan because of everything else that happened in the past. You know the shenanigans that Impact pulled with uh, with Nakamura, with um, was essentially every talent uh, Okada. And how yeah. they treated him in, in Impact. So th that was severed uh, tremendously. And I, and I think due to necessity, the pandemic possibly escalated all of this. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I, do you think if the pandemic never happened in New Japan and, and I get, forget about New Japan, but AEW and Impact would be working together? I don't think so. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, again, I think, <clears throat> I think as far as, the Tony Khan mentality goes with wrestling is I think we would have seen something, but it looked like the stars aligned perfectly for this sort of thing. Like you said, if there, if the pandemic didn't happen, would Gallows and Anderson still be in that dreaded WWE contract that they ended up getting out of because they were laid off yeah. from the pandemic? Right? Or they would have signed. Wait, but pr no, well, they had signed a contract before the pandemic. You're right. Yeah. So they, they would have right. probably still been there. So they would have still been there. 
I think you would have had a very different year of New Japan pro wrestling. I think you would. I think Moxley would have been Moxley and Jericho, I think, would have been focal points yeah. in New Japan last year if there was no pandemic. So I think just because of that, that door could still be open. But I really don't think they'd be doing any Bullet Club stuff like they're doing on AEW. You know, when everybody's like, well, why, how is AEW mentioning? They mentioned Bullet Club, right, on TV last week. Correct. And Impact's been mentioning Bullet Club for weeks now. And you've kind of gotten the hints on AEW. This is exactly why. There's a working relationship here. By the way, Harold Mage is out of out of uh, New Japan. Done. Uh, I think he's staying till March, from what I heard, okay. for the transition. But a new guy is running the show now, and he was in charge mm. of, the, uh, of North America, the North American expansion. So... I don't think this is going to be the same company that we've seen that's been very right. tight and very close. I think they're more open to this. Uh, AEW is a smart bet. Now, what happens to the Ring of Honor relationship with with New Japan? I, I think that's done. Or close to Interesting. done. Interesting. Interesting. Huh? Like, uh, if that's the case, then you kind of... New Japan is has always been in such a great position as far as, like, saying who comes over and who doesn't, right? Because... They're a prestigious organization. New Japan doesn't need Ring of Honor, you know, but New Japan does hurt. not. No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't hurt if they have an AEW or potentially like an NWA or like that, that interesting crossover, you know, yeah. like what would you I, I can't even tell you five people on the Ring of Honor roster right now. And that's unfortunate. You know, I want to we used to be able to name like almost every single person on that yeah. roster. Right. No, I know what you mean um, off the top of your head. Yeah. You, I mean, you're thinking of of a couple, a handful of people, and that's it. There's no top. Yeah, you know, th their story is such a great example of mm -hmm. mismanagement. Right. Or lack of management, sure. I should say, because okay. really uh, and, and this has nothing to do with the guys or even a lot of the people in charge. It just happens that, you know, Sinclair took way too long to dump money into that company. To redo their, you know, visuals. Right. Uh, they did it when they were forced to do it. You know, biggest complaint for Ring of Honor for a lot of people was that, listen, I can see AJ Styles and the Young Bucks on there every week, but it looks like crap. It doesn't look good, which is re reality. Right. It didn't look good until they did that whole major upgrade. But by that point, you know, you kind of expose people to a eh, product visually. Uh, the well, other problem was, oh, sorry, Rich, go ahead. Not not only that, but to kind of like expound on that is not only are you kind of relying on like a mediocre visual product, it's like the guys on top aren't and let's be frank here, the guys on top aren't like financial wizards like Tony Khan is. You know, like yeah. his his family coming from like that billionaire background, being a billionaire, that that's a lot of money, right? Like you have to know what you're doing. Um, I think Tony Khan has proven himself that he knows what he's doing as far as their finances and connections go, which unfortunately a company like Ring of Honor yeah. did not have that backing. You know, like nobody stepped in and said, hey, look, I want to make this look as good as Monday Night Raw. Let's well, do it. They you know? they, but they could have, right? They could. They, they have Sinclair. They got one of the biggest TV mm -hmm. TV uh, 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 syndic syndicators, network owners. You know, Sinclair owns all this property on TV. Their plan... Their plan at one point was to buy the tennis channel or whatever. I think it was a tennis channel and turn it into another sports franchise, another mm -hmm. sports, uh, you know, sports coverage, uh, television product like an ESPN. And you're like, oh, my God, look, this is where you put Ring of Honor, right? You got a national product. Yeah, it's it's only in like 60 million or 70 million homes or 80 mm -hmm. million, whatever number was. But you're getting them on a national product that a lot of cable providers carry. So they didn't do that. They they bounced them around from syndicator to syndicator. You, I still have no clue what channel it's on in New York. Right, right, right. But and then the argument that you hear from the Sinclair side is, that, oh well, it does great in in, in Tuscaloosa on, on whatever right. local channel it's on at whatever time. Uh, their 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 concept is small market and not big market, and that was the big problem with their television product. The other problem was, mm -hmm. you know, you relied on so much foreign talent right like when that we was, started was going issue. to ring of honor you know rick yeah. you and i 2004 we were doing ring of honor shows right right you know and that was all homegrown independent talent you had uh, yeah. i mean you 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 see who who exists from there right daniel bryan uh cesaro aj styles samoa joe 
uh, Adam Pierce, Nigel Tyler McGinnis, Black. yeah, uh, Tyler Black. I mean, the list goes on and on at the talent that they came out of there. But now, you know, the Ring of Honor's peak 2016, 2017 really re- relied on New Japan. They sold at the Garden. Oh, yeah, 100%. And let's be honest here. That was more of a New Japan show than anything. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it was 80% New Japan, 20% Ring of Honor. Even though, like, the Ring of Honor stuff was a lot of fun, I think the crowd was there to see, you know, your Okadas and your Abushis and your Naitos as opposed to, you know, like a few, like a handful of the other guys, you know? Um, And that was a fun night. Like, you can't really beat being at the Garden and seeing Liger and Muda come out in a battle royal, which was awesome. Um, But... I, I, I w- I'm interested to see moving forward what Ring of Honor has planned in this new landscape of wrestling. Like, do you think, from a business perspective and a fan's perspective, that they may have a deal with AEW at some point? You know, it seems to work with NWA. It seems to work with the Impact stuff. Why not add like, oh no, it's so and so for Roosh is here from Ring of Honor. I, I mean. Here, here, a couple things. The Transferring Heat podcast in our chat room, by the way, says mm. something interesting. He's like, listen, if Sinclair didn't buy it, it would have folded up. Yeah, Carrie would have folded that thing up in 2010. It would okay. have been over with. So Sinclair buying it was their lifeline. Their mismanagement of not properly treating it as a, as a, as a, as a property of theirs was the big problem on their side. Okay. Okay. They didn't. It, they never looked at it as ours. They looked at it as, oh well, we bought this thing, and now it, it's it's a television product for our, for our local markets. So, right, right. Um, go back to your question, Rich. Do you think at some point in the future of Ring of Honor, within the next two years, they they would cut their losses and say, hey, listen, AEW, we kind we see what you're doing for NWA, we see what you're doing for Impact. Would you mind if we kind of come aboard? And you know, we are more than happy to send a couple of our guys. To you to be on TV just to get more eyes on the product. Same, and I'll throw MLW in there too. Yeah, I, I th- it's interesting because I know that early on in the concept of of creating this secondary, you know, major North mm-hmm. American promotion was that you would have one event where everybody would come together, and that's what all in mm-hmm. all out was, right? All in, okay. All, all in. at all in, all in, all, all in. in. The first one, yeah. the first one. That's what all in was. <laughs> uh. They Which was wanted, put together by Ring of Honor. By the like, way, they yeah. used all of Ring yeah. of Honor's like like backstage stuff. You know, well, that was the backbone for it. They they, but look look at that show, right? You had guys from Mexico, you had guys from North America, you had unsigned talent, you had previous WWE talent. That was the the mega event, mm-hmm. right? And that was going to be the goal that you put these events on where it brings all these people that you've wanted to see comp- wrestle together. So you could right. have a New Japan guy going up against a AAA guy. You could have a AAA mm-hmm. guy going up against a Ring of Honor guy. And it was going to create this cool environment for pro wrestling mm-hmm. fans and the guys to get profiled like that. Now we're we're more we are in the territory days again. Okay. I mean, really, I, I don't think you know, we could talk about all the bad with wrestling, and there's so much bad, right? We and we'll we'll get to that. But if you think of another moment. In the mm-hmm. history, the last 60 years of pro wrestling, right? Since TV, since it became a big blockbuster on TV, 60, 70 years. When did you ever have this many options and this many promotions and then this many promotions working together and accessible to everybody? Never. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Now, I'm going to flip the question back to you. Do you think this would have happened if it wasn't for the pandemic in like an odd way? I think eventually... Um, I, somebody asked me that right before you came on and I would say eventually mm-hmm. you were going to see these guys all wanting to work with AEW because mm-hmm. they're not going to work with WWE, even though new, new Japan has had many opportunities over the last five years to work together. Don't think okay. that that conversations have not happened. I think a lot of people yeah, yeah. think that WWE is very, very much in their own bubble, but they do reach mm-hmm. out. They did reach out to new Japan a couple years ago, especially when Nakamura went over. Um, yeah. So. I would say that if this is successful, right? And I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about five years from now, right? Mm-hmm. The landscape in 2026 and 2027 are going to be, it's going to be very different if this is successful because then you may see the WWE wanting to work with other promotions. Okay. That's you may fair see enough. that. You may see that happen. You know, this is not the norm. 
Uh, normally, when we look at pro wrestling and we look at what we've seen over the last 20 years, you know, since WCW closed, or even mm. when WCW was around, you never saw ring- another promotion invading in this caliber. Right. You know, where, right. you know, if you really look, I mean, it, it's hysterical that you have John Moxley and Kenta in the ring, Hideo Itami and WWE and, and Dean Ambrose in a major program. And that's something you can never envision in WWE. Right. You would never envision that match to even matter. But it, but now it does. I mean, that, it, it, to be honest, what it, whenever that match happens, that match is going to be extremely important to the business. The success Absolutely. of that match. I, I, I'm, I, I think this is how, you know, I, I like to evaluate the business end. And if you're talking about a work relationship and possibly making this into something much larger, that, mm. Hide, that, Hide Atami, that Kenta and <laughs> Dean Ambrose. And see, I messed it up. That, that Kenta and, and John take a, Moxley. Take a breath. Take a breath. Too many names, dude. Dean, Come back. Hideo, Moxley, John. When you have those two working together... <laughs> It's going to be a very important moment because if it is yes. successful and all parties are happy, listen, what we've been we've seen the tease for Chris Jericho and Tanahashi in AEW, right? Yeah, I, I think and especially now that Tana holds that never title, you know, who's to say he can't show up anywhere else to defend it, right? Oh, yeah, because that's the whole thing, right? Anytime, any place, it's like that's the thing. Um, and I think we're getting uh, Moxley and Archer teaming up against Kenny and Kenta at some point soon. What, what? Yeah, I think it's it's next week, possibly. Okay, is it? I, I somebody I, we're recording the show, so I haven't seen it posted anywhere. I just heard the rumors of that. Uh, it's a lights out match for next week uh, between Kenny Omega, Kenta, and John and uh, John Moxley. I'm having trouble too. John's the easiest name in the world. Uh, John Moxley and Lance Archer. So is that is that what? happening now? That's happening next week. I'm wow. excited about that. Um, I was not a fan of Lance Archer in Japan up until that last G1, I think. Was it last last year or the year before? Where he really reinvented himself. And I like the team of him and Moxley. Hmm. Yeah, dude. I, uh, the, the big monsters. I. You know what? It, it, we'll get to, I want to get to AEW, right? Because I okay. want to kind of touch on this a little bit more. So uh, a little bit more about the New Japan TV deal. Yes. Um, so it just came out about an hour ago or an hour and a half ago uh, prior to recording this that they're going to Roku. Now, that is not the blockbuster TV deal that everybody expected, right? There were a lot of speculation happening, a lot of rumors happening. Uh, some of the rumor was that maybe they're going back to access, which, by the way, I don't take out of the the, the uh, I won't take that off the table yet. OK, Um so I can tell you what I know. I know that they were talking to multiple television providers mm-hmm. uh, in North America. And each and every one of these guys, they recognize. And the people that they were dealing with understood the product, right? So it's not like they're walking right. into a, a network that doesn't get it. They understood the product. Here was their biggest uphill battle. Well, how do you gauge if New Japan is successful in North America, right? How would you gauge that previously, Rich? You're Mr. Executive. I, I'm New Japan. And I'm saying, listen, we did really well in access. What are you going to ask me? Ooh, see, that's a good question, but I feel like somebody would pass the note to that executive saying, hey, these guys kind of sold out the garden. Okay. But for, you know? I know. Well, that that's their thing, right? But they here was their biggest problem. Mm. At the time that they were on access, and I think this is going to be overlooked. So, and, and this is a really big deal when you talk about you know television deals and stuff like that. Mm. There was no Nielsen rating. Okay. Access was not participating in Nielsen at the time. Uh, now they are, obviously, because it's a whole new ownership and uh, it, ratings are very important to impact, obviously. Their Nielsen mm-hmm. score is very important and they want to be ranked because that's how you determine the value of your viewership. They weren't participating. So you really didn't have, you only had internal numbers and internal mm-hmm. uh, estimates. But there was no hard number. And that really was the detriment to to New Japan getting on, I don't know, whatever network. I I, I can't even speculate where they would go. Fox. Fox. <laughs> let's, I don't know. Let's say Fox. Let's say FX yeah. or whatever, which it wouldn't be. But um, yeah. 
that was their big problem, that they had no gauge. So they're still working on a TV deal in North America. It's not over. It's not like they're not going to get it. But they did right. announce that they're going to Roku TV, which um, uh, uh, does it mean anything? <laughs> Are you I got to tell you. Are you let down by this news? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because what you've done is you've alienated, you know, every other streaming provider. Okay. You've alienated uh, Fire TV. You've alienated any of the smart boxes. You've alienated mm. uh, Apple TV, Google TV. You're on one specific platform. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's going to mean much. How many people have Roku's, though? Oh, tremendous. Millions. Uh, tremendous. Okay. Uh, but here's the other problem, right? Those are legacy purchases prior to the Fire TV and Apple TV kind of booming. You've seen okay. a dwindle in that number. I mean, it's slowing down. Other, It's spreading out. Like So the streaming platform, right? the streaming mm. set-top box market is no longer Roku. Before, it was like 89% Roku boxes. Okay. Now, because of all the different options and the way people consume, it's no longer about the device. It's about the provider. And right. you're not going to be able to get this on the other devices. So... The other problem is you may have a Roku in your living room, but you may not have it in your bedroom. So now that becomes a pain in the ass for you, right? Roku wants this because right. they think they're going to sell 30,000, 40,000 units of Roku boxes. Sure. That's why they Do you want. think they will? Do you think they will? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, they got about 60,000 North American subscribers to New Japan, to New Japan World. So... so uh, if if every one of those people purchased a Roku, so I, I got a question for you. So now, yeah. like this news came out like about an hour ago, right? Yes. Um. Now that show, and they said there's going to be an hour long show weekly on Roku, right? along with along with on demand content from previous events. Okay. So does that one hour show just stay on Roku, or can you access it on New Japan World? I don't know. I think that's a good question. Um, so yeah. it's going to be, and listen to this, it's going to be Fridays. New Japan is partnered with Roku. It's an mm -hmm. hourly, it's a one hour program Thursdays at 5 p.m. Okay. I assume that's 5 p.m. East. Premiering February 11th. Oh, no, it's going to be 5 p.m. across all of America. So depending on where you are. Wow, okay. So New, it's going to be America, Canada, and the UK. It's going to be, yeah, mm -hmm. 5 p.m. everywhere. So they're going to, I guess, cool. release it that way. Um, all right. I, I mean, not a blockbuster thing, but it's still something. It's a leg. No. In, you know, they put their leg in the door, through the door. It's, it's cool. You know, I feel like you and I were really hyped on like, yo, is it going to be HBO Max? Is it going to be uh, Pluto? Which uh, Pluto is acquiring all kinds of wrestling content right now, right? I believe Pluto is... Um, IPTV, whatever, whatever that 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 wrestling streaming thing is, that's mm -hmm. who it is. It's not; they're okay. not doing it on their own. Uh, but they they have. I forgot the service. I I just spoke to someone about it too. But they they're mm -hmm. gonna have GCW on there. They're gonna have a you know a beyond ICW, but ICW um, uh, Jack Sabbath, not not the okay. other one. So okay. all right, whatever. <laughs> You know, it is what it is. More wrestling. I'm sure we're going to watch it at some yeah. point. It's just another extra hour of wrestling that we got to find. It's just another extra. But back to back to the main thing, right? Yeah. Right. So AEW right now has a work relationship with uh, New Japan, Impact mm -hmm. Wrestling, mm -hmm. and the NWA. How awesome is that? It's it's I I I'm the NWA is more absorbed in, right? It's not there's no highlight uh -huh. on the NWA promotion other than the women's champion, but I think it's going to change when Nick Aldis shows up, you know? Oh, and for they real. Have a, Nick yeah. Aldis is there and they start doing more back and forths here. Uh this open open concept to AEW is is great, but you know, I think they're a lot smarter than the other people that have attempted this where yeah, they start yes. relying on the talent. I think they they have way more homegrown talent that they're going to feature. Compared to what Ring of Honor did, I just think this is a positive. There's no, there's no going back from here. I, I, I don't see that happening. I think this is the future now. I, I got a question for you now. Mm -hmm. So, arguably, like the a lot of most of the AEW roster got is pretty over with fans, right? Now, what is the what was that magic sauce that made that work opposed to like a Ring of Honor? You know what I mean, like. Jungle Boy is a good example. Like 
everybody loves Jungle Boy, right? And he hasn't been on the scene too long, but you have guys in Ring of Honor who've been there forever who I'm not going to say Jungle Boy is a household name, but there is name recognition within like, why wrestling. Do you think, yeah. Right. Like, why do you think that is? Do you think it's it was BTE? Do you think it's just like the way it's presented or what? Um, it, I don't think there's one answer. I, I think, listen, being in front of five, uh, you know, anywhere from mm-hmm. 800,000 to a million people a week plays a big part in that. Right. And I don't think Ring of Honor has ever had that kind of viewership ever, ever uh, in the history. I mean, I, I don't think they came close right. to that. So obviously more. You got more viewers seeing you. Also, you have the marketing arm of Turner promoting your mm-hmm. product, and you have the marketing arm of AEW promoting your product. I think he's been. It, it's it's all it's a Vince McMahon philosophy. If you if you tell people this is important, people will agree that it's important. Okay, you know that's Fair how enough. wrestling. That, listen, you want to. That's how Vince did it. Vince killed the territories based on making mm-hmm. people feel like no, this is le- this is good. This is legitimate, even though the wrestling wasn't great. Right. In 84, 85, 86, the wrestling was terrible in WWE. There were no opponents for Hogan. You had one or two big names, and that's it. It was just Hogan squashing everybody. You didn't get the matches that you got in, in Mid-South or in Florida or in, you know, in the NWA. It was a different product. Right. But the perception that the, the, this is good is what created the, the boom. Right, um, right. Uh, which I, you know what I want to at the end of the show I want to touch on Bruno and Hogan for a minute because we didn't sure. get a chance to do this but I think it was it's important to talk about but um uh, I don't know man I, I'm excited for this and I know you are oh 100 percent yeah uh where do you want to go you want to talk about uh AEW yeah you know what let's uh let's talk about AEW it was a jam packed show and then we can go really quick into the Rumble stuff right yeah yeah yeah. Um, so yesterday was AEW's beach break and the show pretty much, you know, I feel like the draw of the show was the main event, the team up between Mox and death triangle versus Kenny and the good brothers. And honestly, like apart from the Kenta run in, that was a banger of a main event, right? Oh man. Holy moly. What a match. Um, And I mentioned this to MG Geek because he called me right before going over production notes because he, <laughs> he gives me production notes now. He uh, texts you in at night? Yeah, he texts me in at night and, tells, and gives me the production notes. So did you notice, first of all, those guys in that ring, right? You had Moxley, you had Kenta, you had mm-hmm. Phoenix, uh, uh, Penta, you had Phoenix, you had Kenny, and who else? Gals and Anderson. Gals and Anderson, okay. The 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 difference, right? If you want to talk about the difference in their wrestling ability compared to the rest of the roster. Oh my god. Just and, and it's so noticeable, right? Like on the WWE mm. side, they do a very good job at making that not noticeable between camera cuts and right. the training that these guys get. You know, listen, I don't think uh, minus one or two people on that roster and the WWE roster. I don't ever watch a match and say, my God, these guys are green and on, on WWE main stage product. Okay. Because the, the quality difference, you know, listen, the top is the top. They're great, but the mid card is phenomenal in WWE. Yes. As far as, as far as pro wrestling goes, I'm not talking about character development or anything, but you look at these guys and you say, my God, these guys are all great. They're all very good. The lowest of the, 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 the higher end mid card is still very good on the AEW side. It gets a little wonky and because they're okay. all much younger. They haven't had the TV exposure. They haven't had the wrestling exposure. You know, these guys are wrestling 20 nights. You know, some of them are only doing about 25 nights uh, matches a year or 50 matches a year. Mm-hmm. And, and they're starting out. They're not going to get to that level very quickly. However, I think I don't know. Dude, watching this match, these guys are all seamless. Every one of those mm-hmm. guys in that match were so high as far as the wrestling ability goes. It really exposed everybody else. It's really nuts when you see a main event like that. And I'll agree with you. You know, like it's it's still I think a lot of people expect like a polished product, but AEW is still a work in progress. You know, like they've they've only had like what, like a year and a half of television. If any, if any. Um, but you're your main event guys are next level you know oh, like yeah, like 
Rich, I, I and I never you and I never knock on the talent. You know, like if they no. listen, if someone has a bad match, they have a bad match. But it, it's we know how difficult of a career this is and, and difficult right. of a of a performance this is to be able to go and do a pretend fight and make it look as legitimate and and capture you know millions of people every week to to yeah. get out of the, you know the suspension of disbelief is a major play in this but watching this main event holy mo the the mm. gap between the good and this is such a tremendous gap and WWE doesn't yeah. have that and that, and I'm not saying that as a knock at WWE I'm saying that as as a as an applaud because even if it's stale the product is stale the in ring there's never a, 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 a disparage gap like this. Right, 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 right. But again, I think that's that's your kind of like the work in progress mentality of it. And when when they, when AW needs to deliver, it kind of over delivers. You know? Oh, like, yeah. When was the last time you saw a main event on Raw or SmackDown that compared tag, to that, that main, main event, event last night? Right. Like Dude, a like a six six man main event. You watch Raw or SmackDown, you got a six man main event, you're turning it down, right? Usually. You're, you're like, like, usually eh, all right. Nothing really they, is gonna happen. Did they did that last week, right? With uh AJ, I think it was SmackDown, where they had like the four on four. And it was fun, but these guys put together like your wrestling with high spots kind of four on four. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff makes you gasp. Like Ray Phoenix. And I say it every week, like this dude is going to be AEW champ one day, right? If he doesn't kill himself. Yeah, exactly. Like He's a wild <laughs> yeah, he's... The dude, the dude's on fire. He's like a cannonball. Yeah. Um, but it's also like that interesting mix of here are a bunch of dudes that were in the WWE system, but they don't necessarily have to wrestle like that anymore. You know, so the shackles come off like Pac, Moxley, Good Brothers, right? Listen, it's and a then you show, right? I, I, and... Yeah. Yeah, you know, I someone said this. That's a wrestler, and, and I'm like, I guess so, right? Because I'm not an actor, mm -hmm. so I don't know the difference. But he said, "Listen, it's like taking someone that's a, that's a theater actor. He's a Shakespearean actor, mm -hmm. right? Big on emphasis and big on the emotion of the words and the way the delivery. And then now you take him and put him in a sitcom that's very, very popular. Right, right, right. You know, that's what w, w, WWE is a television product. It's not a yeah. wrestling show. I think we all know yeah, yeah. that now. It has wrestling elements." But it's more treated like a television product. And listen, you fi I find sitcoms corny. Yeah, sometimes they're good, but that's what they're attempting to be. Right, right. And that's a problem. Nothing, nothing too serious. So, like, move, moving on, you also had Shaq. You have, you have like, the promo in place. Shaquille O'Neal and Jade Cargill versus Cody Rhodes in Red Velvet. Um, that's taking place on March 3rd. Um, that little video package they gave Jade Cargill made her look like a monster. Oh, dude. Like, first right? of all, has she, how many matches has she had? I can't even tell it's you. It's not much. She was, a, she was, I believe, I don't want to say rejected from the performance center, but she did have a couple of tryouts, if, if, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. She's a at runner? At the WWE performance center. What, what's her athletic background? Uh, I think think she's a i want to say she's a track person and slash bodybuilder someone knows i forgot what it was but basketball what a, what, d1 there you go division one okay. basketball okay perfect what a crazy aesthetic right and yeah. and as much as i don't want to see shaq wrestle i think it's kind of fun you know and if anybody's gonna wrestle with shaq cody is the perfect person to walk him through that match you know do you have a giant come out and do a face down with shaq like who could you bring out is Luchasaurus that big? No. Like I want like I want like no. someone we haven't seen. Kevin Nash? Bring Kevin Nash out. Who cares? It makes his return. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think it's gonna be interesting. Do you see, how physical do you see Shaq getting in this match? You know what? I'm gonna tell you, I he, he's always loved pro wrestling. Yeah. Right? He he Shaq, I think people don't realize like he's been involved to some caliber in pro wrestling since like ninety four. So uh, yeah. I think for him, this is a big treat, but yeah, I think he's going to do stuff. I, I know that he's trained before this. He's done stuff, mm -hmm. but what, what, I mean, how much does he need to do? Choke slam, a power bomb. I, I'm betting he's going to do like a Vader bomb. He's going to do a dive to the outside, right? Um, Pope. <laughs> oh! <laughs> 
I think I should really do this tope suicida, Cody. Think, what do you think? Can you, can you imagine he just goes in the air and just stays? He just doesn't can move. Do, he just he's floating now. What do I do, Cody? Can I do one of those hurricane runs? <laughs> I love him. I, I do. I don't know, Very man. I low think it's fun. You know what? Yeah, good nah, TNT crossover. They're probably not paying him to do it either, so that's good. Probably well, they TNT moved it, right? They moved his times, his yeah. they moved it because of his uh, his NBA commitments. Yeah, uh, he's going to be a good chain wrestler. Oh, I can't wait. Just he's gonna he's gonna start Frank doing Gotch. catches can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call, call me Carl Gotch. Just just call me Vern Gagne. <laughs> it's like, whoa, this guy's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. Look at those wrist locks. So that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um listen, they made they made uh they made the rounds on social media with Snoop doing the uh the dive. So who knows what they're gonna turn Shaq into, right? Yeah. Uh, so they also announced on AEW a women's championship eliminator tournament, which is mainly it's mainly Japanese talent versus the AEW talent. And I think that's a cool list of people. So the Japanese talent, they're going to have matches in Japan for whatever. I forgot the promotion that they're working with over there. So I'm curious, are we going to see this on TV? Because they're not doing the matches in, in Florida. They're doing the matches there. And then eventually, I guess, whoever is the winner is going to come over and have a match. But uh, I'm curious if they're going to put this on TV. They're going to show clips. They're going to put it online. I, I don't know. I asked this morning. I haven't gotten mm-hmm. gotten feedback yet. Okay. Uh, you want to run down who's going to be in it? Yeah. So we have Aja Kong, Yuka Sakazaki, Veni, or Vini. I'm not sure about this. Emi Sakura, Ryo Mizunami, Mei Saruga, Rin Kadokura, Maki Ito, Serena D, Britt Baker, Tay Conti, Thunder Rosa, Nyla Rose, Anna J, Layla Hirsch, and Riho. This looks like it's going to be, I feel like this is a good, this is going to be a fun thing for wrestling fans in general, you know? And that AEW women's roster is just getting better and better. Um, yeah. We saw a great match between Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa yesterday. Tay Conti's really shining. Uh, I think there's a there's a there's a lot of room for Layla Hirsch to grow and Anna Jay. Um, and it's the return of Riho, right? The return of Riho. Uh, which I think they could definitely use. So I, I do do you think relying on the Japanese talent benefits them? I think it gives the fans something special and I think it does benefit them because it's something different, you know, where it's like, I, I think they're really, I think AEW is really trying to nail all of their, their niche markets, you know, because I, like, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'll tell you why okay. I feel this way. Um, in the beginning, they were going to play They were relying on Japanese talent and I don't think mm-hmm. it worked out well for them. Uh, okay. I, I I think this th- they got forced into not having mm-hmm. them because of the pandemic, but they've done a way better job with their women's division due to necessity, due to not having access to all the talent that they had planned on having access to. With that okay. said, listen, Penelope Ford, they've built up. They've uh, Britt Baker has improved unbelievably. Yes. Uh, Big Swole, uh, you know, she's coming up also. They they have uh, also the NWA stuff has helped them a mm-hmm. lot, too. So they have a, a interesting core now right. that they're, they're, they're building. You know, they're starting from scratch here. I think they've had a better women's division now than they did pre-pandemic. Um, I agree. I, I don't know if this is going to muddy it up a little bit because you, could, you, you were able to tell based on, you know, engagement and viewership that they were not really doing well with the women's matches. Now, with that said... It's a different, you know, it's a year and a half in, so maybe it's going to be mm-hmm. a little bit different. But listen, I'm cool. I'm cool to see Aja Kong there. But does yeah. it matter to the viewer? Again, I think it's just something fun that AEW is doing. And I think they're finding their way in a lot of stuff, like what appeals to who. But I think in my, my perspective, the overall kind of the overall grab and hook is we're bringing you wrestling that you won't necessarily see. Here's this guy from Japan named Kenta. This is his story. Here are all these uh, female Japanese wrestlers that we're using on American TV. Here's some cool stuff for you guys, you know, and then that plus the Shaq stuff or when they did the stuff with Snoop Dogg, it's like they they're trying to appeal to every niche to get more eyes on that product. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's listen, it may it may work. Mm. 
Absolutely. Uh, do you want to go into NXT or you had more AEW stuff? Uh, I was going to... Do you want to do NXT or do you want to quickly do uh, the Rumble kind of fallout from that? Let, let's like, do real NXT. Quick or no. yeah, yeah, let's do okay. NXT and then we'll go into Rumble. Yeah, because a lot happened on NXT as well. A lot happened on NXT. Um, mainly, I thought the highlight was Edge showing up. And I <laughs> feel like I, I marked out 100% because the... The probability of him wrestling Finn Balor at WrestleMania, I think, is very low. But just the fact that they had him on to tease that was very good. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about this before we started the show. And mm -hmm. people are like, well, why is Edge there if he's not going to face him? Right. Is it just right. to hurt AEW's numbers? It is not just to hurt AEW, AEW's numbers. So this is something that WWE loves to do. And that's figure out what someone's draw power is right their power mm -hmm. ranking power um yeah he went to aw he was on he was on nxt and to disrupt a big you know big competition show but mm -hmm. you're also going to get understand now what's edge's true draw power okay put him on nxt let's see what that quarter hour does let's see what that segment does let's see how that how that boosts the show you know are you talking about a 300,000 person boost in viewership? You know what? If that's the case, then they could have, they could easily hit a million viewers for that segment. Yeah, this is, I do think this may be the litmus test for other stuff that they may want to do. Edge is the perfect yep. guy to do this with because he just came back from an injury. He's a beloved household name. He has a lot of clout behind him. He's not, he's also not part of that regular roster just yet, right? He's still on his return. So, him showing up at NXT, if it pops the numbers, you could easily see, let's say, like a Randy Orton show up, right? See how that does. Maybe a Roman Reigns or a Kevin Owens, see how that does. I think if they're after those, those elusive ratings, that might be the way to do it. And this was their litmus, litmus test to see if it actually moves that 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 dial a little bit, right? So we've seen, in the past, we saw them do this. They did that with Charlotte, mm -hmm. right? Who else have we seen show up on NXT from the main roster since going to USA? Kevin Owens. Okay. Uh, he showed up in that... Um, For the program. Uh, yeah, the, oh, the War Games match. War Games match last year, right? Okay. Um, that's Char all I get to Bailey. I think Bailey was in the audience last week. Finn obviously has gone Finn. down there. Yeah. Sasha went down there. Uh, yeah. Bailey, Bailey, like you said, Becky Lynch showed up. But I mean, this would be kind of. Do you want to see Edge versus Finn Balor for the NXT Championship at WrestleMania? No, Ed, Edge, Edge versus Balor. No, not really. Okay. Would you I like think, to I see think that? The other in option general? is way, but yeah, no, dude, I'd love to see it. A hundred percent. Oh, AJ, AJ also showed up. I forgot. That, that is right. That's who I was thinking. AJ Styles yes. showed up on NXT. Um, yes. I would definitely like to see that match happen, just mm -hmm. not at WrestleMania because the other outcome match is so much bigger. I think him and, and Roman Reigns is such a bigger option. Yes. I agree with that. Do you do you want to see that happen? I think like wrestle, watching Edge wrestle anybody is going to be a pleasure. But since it is WrestleMania season, do you think the big swerve was showing up on every show and then Thursday night, the end of SmackDown is Edge spearing Friday Roman night. Reigns? Friday, Friday night, night yeah. is uh, Edge spearing Roman Reigns and then pointing at the WrestleMania sign? I hope so. I hope that's it because I want to see him mm. and Edge. I want to see Roman and Edge. I don't. I don't. I don't think Drew and him. Listen, Drew and him is not the big money match. I think him and, and Roman are. And, of course, there's a story mm. with the spear. And there's also a story from last year's Rumble. Fair enough. Because he eliminated. He eliminated. Uh, Edge got eliminated by, by Roman. Okay. So, you know, you have the story there. And I think that was the big plan last year was to set up all these mini feuds. Him and Styles was going to be one. Uh, mm -hmm. Him and Orton, which we saw. Him and uh, Roman which we may see now, we may not see now. I don't know. Right. But, you know, they set up a lot of these mini things and also Christian coming back, which we, we'll talk about. But uh, so TakeOver Vengeance Day is, a, mm -hmm. is the official title. They're going back to the Vengeance pay-per-view name, which I'm, I'm into this, them using the old WWE names. They've used Halloween sure. Havoc. They did In Your House. Uh, now they did, did, they, I think they did Great American Bash. Yes, right. they did. Yeah, they did Great American Bash. Um, 
This is a this is a stacked NXT event. Oh, big time, big time. Yeah, um, you have the dusty, <laughs> the dusty women's, the classic dusty, dusty women. women's. You got all dusty those dusty fighters. women. Uh, those dusty, dusty women. Uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell or Shotzi and Ember Moon. That's going to be good. That women's division is 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 super strong right now in NXT. Um, you have the Dusty Men's Classic Finals, MSK or Yagata de Fantasma versus the Grizzled Young Vets or Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa. I think it's going to be, I think Thatcher and Ciampa are going to take it. Thatcher and Chop. I'm into that. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, you have the North American Championship between Johnny Gargano and Kushida. I think that's going to rock. Uh, Kushida takes it. Okay. Uh, Women's Championship, Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Mercedes Martinez. Uh, I think Tony Storm takes it finally. I See, here's the thing. D- does I? It, it is the time for her, right? This is Absolutely. when you pull the trigger on it because they've, they've morphed their character. Yes, they, they've evolved it, but there's only so much you could do with that character. I 100 percent. I agree with you. They need to put the title on Tony now. Um, and then you have the NXT championship, Finn Balor versus Pete Dunn. Well, I hope they give him a lot of time for this because I'm looking forward to this match. Yeah, uh, I think Dunn should take the title. You think so? I think so. I think put the title on Dunn, open Balor up for something else on the main roster. They could they could use him, you know? Raw or SmackDown? Uh, who could use You know what? Maybe put him on Raw. Okay. What if, it, what if it's him and Balor? Uh, Balor and... Uh, Drew. Drew. I'd be very cool with that. I don't, know, I don't know fun. if that's... I don't know if that's... A plan. I, I definitely think there is something... We'll talk about WWE in, in a couple minutes, but after Royal Rumble, you kind of see where, where the holes are with this. Uh, sure. Into this show, man. I'm into it. Royal Rumble Fallout. Uh, we saw, we did a watch along for the rumble. We had a lot of fun doing it. Five uh, hours. five hours of talking. I was dead on Monday. I couldn't even talk after being oh. on the air for that long. Dude, thank God it was a snow day. Like I told my <laughs> oh, wife, yeah. Hey, Hey, I'm going to be useless the entire day. Cause I'm not going to be able to shovel until tomorrow. And I just chilled out, dude. Did you pay somebody to do it? Or you shoveled? So on Tuesday morning, um, I was able to clear out most of the pathways, but then there was one of our neighbors who had like the mini dozer and I gave him like 40 bucks and he like got all the cars all. out and cleared up all this stuff. Cause we usually get plowed in. He cleared up all the stuff. And uh, if he didn't do that, I would have been out there until like five in the afternoon. It was like a lot. Yeah. I, uh, I got a snowblower. So I just went through the whole thing and just, I was done, but nice. let's, uh, let's talk about rumble. The big stories here, obviously, Bianca Belair, women, women's Rumble winner. A uh, mm-hmm. lot of lot of speculation if she actually won. Did you see the photo where both her feet are on the floor? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that was just like a gaff. They ran that spot way too many times in the same yeah. exact location, and they ran it with her twice. Uh, I was not crazy about that spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, with like, okay, let's just restart. It was okay, it was fine, but I wasn't nuts with about it. Uh, okay, you know what? There's, I think a lot of people were upset that she won. Uh, I think she's a yeah, very good pick if yeah. she's going up against uh, if she's going up against Sasha Banks. That's the Absolutely. story there. Uh, I think there's something naturally organic about that where they could mm-hmm. have a great back and forth, and I think this will be a good showing for her. You want to you want to present her in a way that she's going to be able to get over with the promos and everything else. Sasha Banks is a great opponent for her. Absolutely. And plus, like this is WWE's moment to make another female wrestler like she's going to get made, quote unquote, with this match. Um, And people love her. There's like a big groundswell of Bianca Belair supporters, which you know what? Like she's living up to that hype so far. Uh, a little bit of a rough start in NXT a few years ago, but she's come such a long way. And you can tell that she's put in so much work into her in into her in ring that and her aesthetic that WWE is going to push her to the moon now. Yeah. Uh, men's side big story. Edge wins the men's Royal Rumble. Uh, they did a really clever ending, and I really enjoyed it. How Edge was, you know, Randy Orton didn't get eliminated. He was escorted out because of an injury. Which, mm-hmm. by the way, I think we need to put that away at this point, right? Okay. We need to we need to stop the whole. The number three or four, like a, like a favorite getting hurt and having that mm-hmm. linger over your head. 
I, I think we could we could go beyond it. They've done it a couple times already. Right. But it was it was still a clever ending. Uh, Edge is the winner at 48 years old, right? Winner Crazy. of the Royal Rumble. A lot of people very upset over this, over the age thing. Oh, get uh, out the of here. dude. I, you know what? I'm gonna. I want to talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, you want to go into please. it now? Uh, we'll talk. Yeah, about the dude. Rumble. I want to hear your thoughts okay. about Edge being 48. <laughs> well, Edge is 48. Carlito showed up. He's in his 40s. Good uh, lord. You had you had, uh, you had Goldberg on the card and. Listen, I'm not saying this is my thought to this, okay? I'm mm-hmm. going to start off with that before I get the attacks that I like the old-timers. Not everything is a one-size-fits-all, right? right. There's diff- it's fine that you don't want to see Bill Goldberg in a world title match, and it's mm-hmm. also fine for you to like that Edge one. It's also fine that you like uh, Sting or you don't like Sting. It's whatever. Everything is, is your... Whatever you like is what you like. But the big discussion now is... Why does WWE rely on these guys so much in recent times? Right? That's a big question. Yeah. And, everybody, question. And, and the answer is obviously draw power and casual viewers. Yeah, the hardcores are watching, but the casuals have kind of plummeted. Rich's mm-hmm. favorite term, the P2s and the P3s oh, are not yeah. here as talk much. To me. <laughs> yeah, let me give you my P's. You want me to talk Even about Cume? I'll talk about Cume yeah. later. But, I put that in my rice sometimes. Yeah. So somebody wrote to us on you put cumes in your rice. I like that. Yeah, some some cum. <laughs> yeah, I put I put peas in my rice. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody wrote to me. He's like, "Why is it so much more now? We never saw this in the '90s. We didn't see this in the 2000s." Right. Well, and, you didn't you didn't need it. Well, if they could have, they would have. Right. You got to yeah. look at it this way, and, and this is something that has not really been brought up. A lot of the talent from 20 years ago in 1999, right? That would have been talent from 1979. These guys sure. worked a lot of dates. Yeah. They were not in the condition. First of all, they didn't have national television exposure, right? right. So that's one. They wrestled whatever, 250 to 300 nights a year. Not easy travel. Life was not easy for these guys. Right. They didn't become millionaires. Most no. of these, I mean, a lot of them did, but not all of them. They didn't become instant millionaires or or close to it where they had a much easier, relaxed life. You know, you mm-hmm. hear stories, guys were making, you know, X amount of money on the road. When they stopped wrestling, they had to go and get a job selling cars. It's the it's the old football player story. Right, right. You go from the pro ball to to selling used cars for your, your wife's uncle. It, it, that was the reality of things. So the reason why we're seeing a lot of these guys, number one, there are a lot of them are healthy. You know, right. there's an entire generation that was able to realize that living that life on the road, especially the guys from the late 90s, they saw mm-hmm. what happened to their peers. Either they died or they can't even walk. And these guys, these select guys stayed healthy and they're still able to wrestle. Where opposed to 20 years ago, those guys were not, you didn't have the, 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 the national exposure. So they're a household name for a lot of these guys. And you also yeah. didn't have the health. That these guys yeah, have, a hundred percent. But you know, you know what WWE used to do was. Uh, do you remember that whole Heath Slater bit where he would get beat up by a different by, legend by, every by week? a legend? Yeah. But they gave those legends like a minute to work. You know, like hit their finish and that's it, and pop the crowd. Where as opposed to now, yeah. You know, Edge worked the entire Royal Rumble. Um, <laughs> For, and I, yeah, yeah, he worked the entire Rumble. And he looked great. And the other thing I, I kind of want to mention too is like. WWE did a very odd thing in the early 2000s when it came to the legends because in 2002 Hogan was undisputed champ I think right or was it was, 2003 Hogan's a golden goose right like I he's I take the golden him out goose. of the I take him out of the equation um but for every Hogan that returns right I, I mean listen mm-hmm. at the till the end of time WWE will use Hogan Hogan and Andre and Warrior and Macho will be till yeah. uh, Rock Hogan Hunter. Uh, those guys will be immortalized, Sean, immortalized till the end of time, right? They, they have, Absolutely. They have, left, they have left reality, and now they're characters, they're cartoons. You could see it mm-hmm. next to me. You know, you never had, this didn't exist. This, right. These didn't exist for those old, you know, guys from 30, 40 years ago that were wrestling. So it's a very different thing, and it's, recogn- it's, it's recognizability, recogn- recognition. Recognition? Re- 
My brain. Hold on. Uh oh. I gotta uh-oh. reset my brain. Uh oh. Take a deep breath. Uh-oh. Take a deep breath. It's all going black. It's over. Oh no. They're easily recognizable. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So you did it. I did it. Thank God. Uh. I mean, listen. Look at Carlito. Looks better than he ever did. Somebody put Carlito's head on John Cena's 2006 body. Same, same. Yeah, that's you said. (laughs) He has John Cena's body from 2006. It's great. Uh, Do I look at that as a negative that he's there? No. You know what? He needs to make a living too. Absolutely, you can't begrudge anybody for making a living. And also, like, don't you think Vince looked at him and was like, "Holy balls, kiddo." What happened to you? Oh yeah, they definitely they definitely <laughs> saw him and said, "Oh my god." But, you know, you know, the big question, you know, you Christians back full time mid 40s, Edge is back late 40s. Uh mm-hmm. Bill Goldberg's in a match. Brock Lesnar's coming back obviously. John Cena possibly coming. You know, but the roster is a lot older. And and yeah. that's not due and uh, by the way i think the average rumble i think it was like 37 years old 36 and a half years, years old the average age of the men's rumble uh opposed to i forgot there was a statistic and nor- it was like 31 for the other one i i forgot what they were comparing it to but mm-hmm. guys are staying healthier therefore they're gonna get older yeah they're absolutely. gonna stay they're gonna stay active listen it, it w what wwe did with that big boom was that out of it was a it was out of necessity they had to create talent because the old town left. I don't, right, and right. I'm not. I'm not defending using old town because obviously it gets stale. But you, you're not having that turnaround as quickly as you did. A guy right, like the exactly. Miz would not be on TV still if this was another era. Right. These guys, Miz is a great example of, you know, like he's worked the schedule. He's been there for a million years. Uh, he's not very injury prone. He works safe. You know, um, you could kind of make a Ric Flair comparison and like they both work very smart and to further like have uh, have have career longevity. Right. Uh, if you think about the guys from like the late 90s through the 80s too. They're all banged up. Like Austin had to leave because he was banged up. Mick Foley, you know, um, Kevin Nash is a good example. Even Sean, like taking taking a, a lengthy break because of an injury. You know, now yeah. you got guys like AJ Styles who are in their forties who look like they can go with anybody on earth and haven't slowed down. Yes, I mean, listen, you're gonna slow down. It's gonna change, but I I think the comparison with age is. It's 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 a difficult comparison because mm-hmm. if we go to 2000, the peak of pro wrestling, if you took a guy from 1980, a top guy from 1980, and you put him in the main main positioning, you know, the main mm-hmm. event, how would that guy do? Right. How would Bruno San Martino do in 19, in, in the year 2000 in WWE? Not well. <laughs> how it, you know it wouldn't happen. It, it was also, I think it was also a different time where if Bruno came back in the early 2000s, it would, I think it, I don't know if it would be a joke. Listen, you young whippersnapper. But, but I feel like it would just be like a quick, like one-off thing as opposed to like, I think the Sting return is a great example. WWE pulled out all the stops to get Sting there to have a couple of matches, right? If Bruno was healthy around that time and able to still go, do you think they would have given years old. him? I'm sorry, he would have wow. been 65 years old then. Do you think they would have given him like, if he was healthy, good to go. Do you think they would have given him like a marquee match? I think Bruno's a bad example because he was a lot okay. older. But let, let's think who 1985, uh, I'm sorry, 1980 to 2000, right? 20 mm. years. Who was popular in 1980? 1980 WWF. Let's see. Who was their champion? Okay. Uh, 1980 alumni. Here we go. 1980s. Mm-hmm. I want to see 1980. I want to see a card show. All right. Let's do this. Because this go is interesting it. if you think about it. I know we're on a tangent here, but. Which is fine. Uh, 1980, 67. Okay. Let's see the garden here. Okay. 1980, sure. Madison Square Garden. Here we go. Broadcasting live on MSG Network, featuring Vince McMahon on commentary. You had mm-hmm. the main event. Oh, well, you had Hulk Hogan. Sure. And WWF Tag Team Champion Tito Santana with okay. a suplex. 
Renee Goulet, awesome. Renee Goulet in a match. You had Bob Backlund, WWF champion, uh-huh. Hensika, right? That was your title match. Andre the Giant and WWF champion, IC champion, Pat Patterson defeated Bobby Duncan, Duncan and Ken Patera. Larry Zabisco defeated Bruno San Martino with Arnie, Ar- 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 Arnie Scullin in his corner. Mm-hmm. So Larry Zabisco, here we go. You know, Kerry Von Erich was in this, was here. Here we go. Wow. You know what? He's the only one that could have survived in nineteen in two thousand. I think Kerry could have had a match. Okay. All right. Nobody Fair else. Enough. I mean, I don't count Super Hogan healthy. here, right? Because Hogan is an exception. But very interesting time. There's nobody. Yeah. Tony Atlas, which you still still saw on Peter Maivia, Ivan Putsky, Gorilla mm-hmm. Monsoon, Larry Zabisco, Larry Sharp. Different era. Didn't work. You couldn't translate this. <laughs> You know, I also think like that, like the quote unquote part timer returns are fascinating because I, in terms of WWE, I think the more guys that they can not give much direction to, the happier they are. You know, they're probably not giving much direction to Edge at all. By the way, we uh, uh, here's one. Uh, Superfly Snooker, Jimmy Snooker. You saw him on TV until, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, brother. Brother. So uh, it's an interesting comparison. I think we need to remember mm-hmm. that when we talk about people's age and, and how old they are. Listen, I, I understand the argument that the younger guys need to be featured more. But in, in yeah. the way that they're running it, it just, my God, it sucks for them. They don't get that, that exposure. They don't, it's too convoluted. Let mm-hmm. me just put it that way. And we'll move on to something else. Very convoluted setup here. Yeah. Lars Sullivan. Your favorite, Rich. Your favorite. My favorite. Lars is gone. <laughs> poor, yeah. uh, poor, yeah. stupid Lars. Oh well. That that guy. Listen, obviously he has tremendous issues, right? He, there's, yeah. There's a lot of problems with Lars. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp actually did an interview with him. He spoke. Oh, to fascinating. Him. Okay. And pretty much, Lars said he asked to leave. That he right. asked for his release. Uh, being in that company was a terrible detriment to his mental health. Okay. He will never, he will most likely never wrestle again. He wants out wow. of wrestling totally. Crazy. Uh, he blamed himself for all of his problems, said it was all mm-hmm. him. It wasn't anybody else. He was, he spoke very highly of WWE, okay. uh, and said, you know, his big stupidity caused all of this. Sure. All right. Moving on. I just, you know what I, it, it it's it's actually like you talk about self imploding, right? Great, oh, yeah. best, you, sometimes people just set themselves up for failure, and that's that's what happened here with him. He just couldn't so, he couldn't cut it. Nothing, you know. I I yeah. hope he gets his 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 anxiety and everything else under mm-hmm. under control, and he's able to do well in his life. But just wrestling was not for Lars. No. A lot of what ifs, though. What if he had that match with Cena? Sure. What I, I've, uh, you know, a lot of the Lars stuff reminds me of like Ryback. Also, for some reason, maybe it's because like they're both like, like, <laughs> kind of like, like peanut looking dudes. <laughs> they are peanut looking. They do look like peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. Uh, what else peanuts. do we have here, Rich? Anything else? Uh, it looks. Let's see. Let's go back to this. I we we actually did cover everything that we wanted to talk about. Yeah. Oh, here's one thing. I want to talk about Christian a little bit. I didn't get a chance oh, yeah, to please. bring this up. So Christian's back. Uh, Edge and Christian definitely going to be doing tag teams, right? I would love the SummerSlam match to be Edge and Christian versus the New Day and the Usos. Uh, SummerSlam, Edge and Christian. You know what? Put the IC title on Christian. Put the world yes. title on, on Edge. Have them, in, have them have all the titles and I'll be happy. I'll go home. Oh, uh, forget it. I, no, I think I, 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 mean, I think Christian could have a good, good showing. Yeah, absolutely. No, there's, there's a tremendous amount they could do with these two. Uh, Christian looked like a million bucks, and yeah, you know, obviously he was training for this, but he didn't get cleared until the week prior. Oh, that's very interesting. I did not know that. And I, I he, I don't know what he's doing. If he's doing the, 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 the cryogenic stuff, whatever that is, you know, that uh-huh. Joe Namath swears by, and Daniel Bryan was doing for so long for concussions and. Right, right. Uh, everything else. Uh, I don't know if he did it because I know his issue was concussion. So, but whatever it is, they were not clearing anybody for a very long time. And there's been a definitely a shift in attitude with clearing these guys. Uh, Edge is a great example. You know, he had a career ending injury that that was, I mean, it was so dangerous that they didn't even, he didn't even have another match. 
Right. They so, just pulled him. He just he just forfeited the title. So I someone saying you printed your notes double sided. I did print my notes double sided. <laughs> I did. Stupid Mac. I can't even see what I'm doing here. I'm like, why why am I looking at the same notes here? Um do you want to do QA? But I'm excited for Christian. Let's do a QA. Yeah, sure. Um guys, if you have any questions, please submit them in the chat room. Uh, usually they are on the notes, but we're going to have to go back and get some scoops. Yeah. Submit your questions in the chat room and we'll do our best to answer. While we're doing this, let's pay some bills here. I want to thank everybody that tuned in on F4W. Guys, we are on WrestlingObserver.com. We, our show's posted there every Thursday following this. We're also on GFKNetwork.com. We're also doing watch-alongs uh, on Wrestling Observer. I know a lot of people really enjoyed hanging out with us, watching the show with us. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I think we had like 20-something thousand people that hung out with us, which is always awesome, right, when you guys are hanging out and we're able to make this a lot more fun because watching wrestling alone, not so much fun. So uh, I got the notes here. We got some questions coming, and where are we posting these questions? Here we go. John, what do you think Damian Priest's upside is on the main roster compared to Keith Lee when he got the call-up? I don't know. You know, they, they they all face a very specific issue, and that's heading on over to the WWE, <laughs> uh, the, to the main roster. I always feel that that's always a big problem for these guys that get over. Damian Priest is a little bit different. He obviously, listen, watching Ring of Honor, you know who he is, but he didn't have the hype momentum that Keith Lee did. Um Sometimes that's a detriment to you when you get to the main roster, when everybody's talking about how amazing you are, how great you are, and Vince or another agent will see something they don't like, and that's it. You know, I call it the CM Punk uh, complex, the CM Punk issue. This guy was talked about as being the second coming of any top wrestler you could imagine on the independent, you know, growing 2003, 2004, 2000, ah, 2000, you know what? Anywhere from 02 to 05. That's all you read about was CM Punk. And when you saw him, it was not what you had envisioned in your head of who he was. I, and I always go back to that. Uh, Punk's biggest thing was the way that they spoke about him being this unbelievable pro wrestler with this great look. It never, once they got a hold of him, they're like, this is it. Uh, I'm not saying that that's Damian Priest's problem because he looks unbelievable, but I think the, the hype with a lot of these guys is a lot more than what the main roster thinks of them. And I think Keith Lee suffered from them. I think Keith Lee came up. The people were really behind him. I also think not having any fans for Keith Lee was a major, major problem because you couldn't really gauge how over this guy was. You know, once they once you got the fans out, it exposed a lot of the stuff that WWE doesn't like about a big guy, you know, doing all these moves. And they they kind of screwed it up. So I don't know if Damian Priest is going to have the same problem. It looks like he's going to be in a program with Bad Bunny at WrestleMania against oh, Miz and Morrison. That. But I can't wait. <laughs> that, you know what? That's a super high profile match. Absolutely. I think there's there's an argument to have Bad Bunny on um, WWE TV. I think he's popular enough and is a big wrestling fan enough that it it's fun. You know, like I'm not I don't I'm not cringy about Bad Bunny being on WWE. I'm not either. A lot of people don't like it. They don't like Bad Bunny. They don't know they who he don't, is. They, I think they don't realize worldwide, internationally, how popular he is. I, I think on Instagram, yeah. he has more followers than WWE does. Uh, this guy, this guy's videos have half a billion views on YouTube. Yeah, And they're so, fun. Listen, whatever. He's a fun guy. They're going to do this anyway. So might as well be with someone that absolutely loves wrestling and has a song about a wrestler. Why not? You know, I don't see it being yeah. a, 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 a big of an issue. They, they do this every year. They like to have a major crossover uh, mainstream mm -hmm. star show up, and I think he's fine. He's exactly what they wanted. So they plus, pl plus they lost the Snoop Dogg. They lost the Snoop Dogg. They did. You know what? Are they interchangeable in WWE's eyes? I, I don't think they're interchangeable, but I do think there was a scramble because hey, I feel like... Give me the lanky rapper. <laughs> I, think, I think there was a scramble 
when they saw like Snoop Dogg is an easy get for them, right? Because Sasha Banks, there's a history there. He's shown up to a ton of WWE stuff. Yeah, I'll just throw Snoop Dogg on. But then Snoop Dogg's like, no, sorry, I made a mistake. I thought I was I went to the wrong office, you know, (laughs) and then he's on he's on AEW, which is awesome. They were probably like, oh, who could we get? Who is who is so popular right now and who has a clear love of what we do? that we can get them. And remember, he had Bad Bunny had Stone Cold Steve Austin in a video la- like last year or 2 years ago. Yeah, something like you that. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Flair also. Booker T. Um the dude's a wrestling fan. I wrestling. think they're going to capitalize on that. Rappers love love wrestlers. So Absolutely. there you go. Um get me the lanky rapper. Or maybe he wanted <laughs> Pitbull. They were in Florida. He's like, "I want Pitbull." Get me. Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I never hear Pitbull again, I'm fine. Come uh, on, baby. Let's... Rhea Ripley, Raw or SmackDown, better fit. What do you think, Rich? Uh, I think uh, Raw is a better fit for the character, and I think Raw needs that dominant female again. And you know what? She was my pick for the Royal Rumble, but it was cool that she it came down to her and Bianca Belair. Do you like her theme? I do. I hate the word brutality. I hate how they say it in the in the entrance. Uh-huh. This is my brutality. Brutality. Yeah. Uh, I, listen, I, I think she's going to be a good fit anywhere. I, she, she's a star, so I think she'll get over no matter where she goes. I, I don't think that yeah. it's going to be a, a this or that, depending on you know for her career. Well, also, like, think about like your two your two call ups of Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley. They both look completely insane. Like they're so jacked. Right? Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah, and you put them on. I think I think that's like an interesting, like the new crop of NXT talent, where it's like, oh, what are you feeding these people? I'm watching Mustafa Ali right now on a mm-hmm. WWE Network exclusive on the USA. Now, I guess this is raw from. I don't know if this is how old this is, but Mustafa Ali leading this ridiculous stable is so him, stupid. It's so for him, stupid. Though. I know. Yeah, listen. Uh, he's a phenomenal wrestler, but this is so ridiculous with the bait. It means nothing. Listen, he's trying to turn chicken shit into chicken salad. Yeah, and it's very difficult. <laughs> but he's doing he's doing a good job, I think, being a prick. You know? Oh, he's gotten himself over, for sure. I, I, I like this character. He just didn't need the doofuses with him. He could have done this alone. Yeah, I think I think the names also kind of hurt them. Oh, God, the names are terrible. Right, like if they had, if you were booking this, wouldn't you give them like cool names, like to start with? And you know something what? When that... I see them, when I see them, Rich, I think of mm-hmm. exactly the names that they have: Mace, Slapjack, Play-Doh, T-Bar. Ugh. What? What names would you give? Would you have given them? I guarantee uh, those, you. If... No, those are the exact names. I wouldn't have given That's them. That's it. Any you would have given the names are ex- are perfect for what they are. <laughs> They Mr. are a Bananas. slapjack and they are a T-bar. Imagine if one of them was called Mr. Gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I love it. I Self-fulfilling love it. prophecy. Dave D. Is Carlito's brother still signed? No, they're gone. Carlito's brothers are gone. They got, they got okay. released a while ago. Uh, Lewis says, asks, who do you team Carlito with? I don't know. I think you know him and him and uh, Jeff Hardy were a decent thing, but obviously I, I think they could lead into a match. Him and Hardy, start him off there. You know, I would love him to be in the Hurt business. Okay, um, that that could work, but you know where I think he would fit in perfectly. Where NXT, the group with Gargano and Austin Theory. Uh, as like a comedy thing, I as think that'd be ridiculous. Like- but they're enforcer because he's so much. He's like the older vet, and he's so much bigger than them. I, I think you would expose how tiny they are. The little fellas. Carlito's a big dude. Carlito's a gigantic dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Transfer any podcast. Do you think Edge and Christian versus Usos at one point uh, before Mania? I think you got. Well, it depends. Are they both back? I think one of them is still hurt. Right. I think one of them is still hurt. I think that match has to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but maybe you're going to get, you know, you'll get, ah, uh, you know what? What if you get Edge versus the healthy Uso, who is a Jey Uso, mm-hmm. at WrestleMania, and you get uh, Roman versus Edge? 
Okay. And you have them do a tag team match before. I'm cool with that. Whatever pay-per-view. I'm cool with that, too. That's fine. I feel like there's going to be a turn with the Roman stuff where, like, maybe on SmackDown, we're going to see him joined by Kevin Owens and they start making, like, this bigger faction. I don't know what the plan for him is. Obviously, you know, (sighs) they're going to have to continue this tribal chief thing for another year. It was very promising when he started it because you automatically thought like he's going to get both Usos. He's going to get Tamina. He's going to fight Rikishi. He's going to eventually get up to the yeah. rock. Um, well, I think all and, that was leading up for the rock, you know, why, why do it now? Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I, listen, it's still phenomenal. I still love it. Nakamura. Happy to see him as a face basher. 3000 says. Oh, absolutely. I don't know why the ultimate warriors on our screen right now. Do you see this? Uh, we just because we just got four ninety nine from Basher oh, three thousand. Nice. There you go. That's why Warrior showed up. Thanks, buddy. And he said Carlito and Priest will likely team as the Puerto Rican princesses. I would love the Puerto Rican princesses. Great tag I'd be okay team, with man. That. Uh, do you think we're gonna see Goldberg at WrestleMania? Yes, we will see Bill Goldberg at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. He'll be there, and so will Sunberg. Sunberg. Sunberg is gigantic now. Mm-hmm. He's not. A, he's not a little guy. And Corey asked, do you really think Balor goes back to the main roster? Yeah, I think, you know, that, that was always the plan. He was supposed to only be there till uh, SummerSlam. And because of the pandemic, obviously, he let he stayed. But they definitely need the talent over there. Night after WrestleMania. You think the night after WrestleMania he leaves? Well, here's a question yeah. for you. Uh, I, mean, I got one for you. What do you think happens the night after WrestleMania? Because they're touring, right? They're going to be traveling. All right. Um, as far as like the crowd goes, or as far as the the wrestling, like what am wrestling. I going to see? Wrestling. I'm going to say okay. Night after WrestleMania. Well, that's a Monday night. That's Monday Night Raw, right? I was thinking of the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Edge Edge is holding the title, and he gets challenged by Finn Balor. Okay. Uh, um, do you think you get a big return? I think the Monday. I'm going to say Drew retains, right? Whoever whoever he's facing. And then that Monday is a big return and Drew loses the, the Monday after WrestleMania. Oh, you think he'll lose it? Yeah, I think he retains at Mania and then the night after there's like a gigantic return or a gigantic challenge and Drew loses that title. Like so, Brock Lesnar shows up Monday night. Oh, well, Lesnar's a great option here, right? Because that's mm-hmm. possibly the SummerSlam match if Drew... Because uh, they're going to have the rematch for sure. You know, right. they're, they're in a very interesting moment. And, and I think when we talk about WWE, um, this WrestleMania is not going to be the big story. I think it's going to be what happens after. That's the big story here when everything goes yeah. up in gear because they're mm-hmm. forced to travel. I think a lot of people don't realize this. They're, they've, they're losing Tropicana because of baseball. So right, right. you can no longer, they, they can't use baseball stadiums because it takes them a while to set up the field and everything, and it's not great for the grass. So they're out of baseball stadiums. They could do a residency in a football stadium again if they need to, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't think they plan on doing. So they want to go back to smaller venues, maybe three, four, five thousand 5,000 people in the building and make it look good. You know, I, I, I wrote that recently. Someone's like, well, that's that's not a lot of people. I'm like, you know. Even during the peak SmackDown stuff, like 2016, 2017, there were mm-hmm. episodes of SmackDown where there were only like 4,500 people in the building. You didn't even realize. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they, like you kind of caught a glimpse of it when you were like, hey, all that stuff is taped up back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's going to be the big post-WrestleMania stuff. Um, listen, I, uh, nobody knows if that's going to happen because everything changes. Right now, everybody's reporting that the numbers are really good. Uh, things are improving, which let's hopefully it'll stay this way. Hopefully everything will improve. And by, by September, we'll be going to wrestling, you know, major wrestling shows at the garden again, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, it's, it's a, it's a great question here, by the way, guys, this Friday, I'm appearing, uh, with Sean Ross Sapp after SmackDown on Fightful to discuss SmackDown. So I'm going to be on with Sean. Sean showed up, uh, you know, we did a crossing of the streams here. On uh, this watch along on F4W, I think people were shocked to see Sean Ross Sapp on a Wrestling Observer product, which I'm a lot of very proud. I'm very proud that I brought everybody together. Jim Valley called in. Garrett Gonzalez mm-hmm. called in. We had Denise call in at the top of the show, which she hit a home run, which we're going to have her back very soon. 
So a lot of, you know, a lot of moving parts here, a lot of great collaborations, and I'm hoping, hopefully, we'll continue doing this. Absolutely. You were, you were like Vince McMahon uh, in the 80s, uniting the territories. I united the territories for my I'm greater still, plan. Uh, listen, I still think that at some point we need to do the podcast or Battle Royal. Listen, uh, I will, uh, can I eliminate you and then do one of these? Uh, you know what I'll do? We'll, it'll be like the final four, right? Sure. And I eliminate you, uh-huh. and you'll look at me, and you'll, you'll laugh, and I'll go, and then I'll get tossed out by Dave Meltzer. And, he'll, and then he'll, I'll, yeah, I'll catch you and put you back in. Put me back in, yeah. Dave uh, will just throw skins, me out. Who skins oh, the cat? Who skins the cat? Yeah. Uh, who skins the cat from the podcast from the wrestling podcast world? Yeah. Uh, I think you, you and Sean simultaneous skin, skin the, the cat. cat. <laughs> come back in. <laughs> Alvarez definitely skins the cat, but I was trying to come up with someone ridiculous to skin the cat. And right. I couldn't I couldn't come up with a ridiculous answer. I Chico have. Alvarez will do it. Perfect. Degree. All right, guys. That's it. That's it for this week. Uh we'll see you all next time. Later. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Wait. Rich, oh, wait, wait. Your podcast. Wait. Your podcast. Oh, hey, hi. Uh behind the counter's back, guys. BTC 2.0. Every Saturday morning, I'll be posting a new video on YouTube at BTC Rich X. I hope you Beautiful. Join me. Beautiful. And uh, we'll start posting it on gfknetwork.com too. All right. That's it for this week, boys and girls. See you next time. Bye-bye for now. Later.